Other samples are on their way to Austria and other labs around the world. The package is brought into a sterile room. At each stage, proper procedures are followed to make sure that the samples aren't damaged or contaminated. The tiny samples inside weigh just a few grams each. Are these the remains of Alexei, Maria or Anastasia Romanov? To find out, viable DNA will have to be extracted, then traced back through the generations to genetic markers shared by a select group of people, the intermarried households of European royalty. The Romanov children, like the British royal family, were descended from Queen Victoria. The DNA in this royal bloodline bears unique identifying genetic characteristics. Michael Koble and his team are more used to dealing with modern remains. These bone fragments are nearly a century old, and teasing viable DNA out of them won't be easy. DNA is fragile and easily damaged by the ravages of time. They've endured almost a century below ground in a climate of extremes, well below freezing in winter and swelteringly hot in summer. To extract and test the DNA, most of the powdered sample will be used up. If this first attempt fails, there might not be enough material left over for a second definitive DNA analysis. And the mystery of Russia's royal grave may never be solved. An international effort is underway to solve the 90-year-old murder mystery of the Russian royal family. American forensic anthropologist Anthony Falsetti has a lead that may help him piece together separate shreds of evidence recovered from the crime scene. It's a testimony from a long-dead witness. Years ago, it would have been unthinkable. But now an American investigator has high-level access to Moscow's state archive. Here I am, an American scientist, two floors below ground, a hundred years worth of communist secrets. The keeper of those secrets is Dr. Ludmila Likova. Giant blast doors designed to protect the Kremlin's most precious records from nuclear attacks swing open. We're down here, it's 30 feet, walls are two feet thick, and this is Lenin's archive. If Soviet archives hold the missing pieces to the Romanov puzzle, this is where they'll be. So these are Lenin's documents, his originals? Uh, Lenin. This one's from Copenhagen, correct? Yeah. Okay. Rumor here going that the Tsar has been murdered. Kindly wire facts. What's this? This inquiry was one of many sent to Lenin in the weeks and days before the killing. This was his reply. Rumor not true. Tsar safe. All rumors are only lie of capitalist press. And it's signed Lenin. When Lenin wrote this reply, the royal family was alive, asleep. But they had only hours left to live. By daybreak on the 17th of July, the deed had been done. But exactly what happened in the cellar is still open to question. Only the executioners knew, and their statements are on file in another basement. The report filed by the head executioner, Commander Yakov Yurovsky, is regarded as the most accurate account and makes chilling reading. Yurovsky said this about the execution of the emperor's family. They stood along the wall, and here he said the following words to them. The reign of the Romanovs has reached its end. Despite the fact that relatives both outside and inside the country are trying to liberate them, the Ural Soviet of the workers' deputies has decreed they must be shot. When the executioners opened fire, 
There were a number of problems. Amongst them, they were in a basement room with stone walls, which sent the bullets sort of ricocheting around the room. The firing, Yurovsky says, becomes ever so confused. And when this confused fire ended, the shooters saw the daughters were still alive. They shot the girls, but nothing happened. They weren't able to kill them. Incredibly, eyewitness accounts agree that the duchesses seemed to be protected by jewel-filled corsets that acted like bulletproof vests. Statements by surviving firing squad members recorded in the 1960s confirm this. It, it appeared they'd sewn diamonds into their bras, a variety of necklaces, pearls, etc., etc. Bullets were bouncing off. There was somebody, well, so to say, as if they had not finally killed this woman, Anastasia. A botched execution. Anastasia may have survived the initial gunfire. Could she really have cheated death with a gem-laden corset? And if that was true, then what else might be possible? All the accounts go on to say that everyone was finally killed with a gunshot wound to the head. But what if that's a lie? What if there were co-conspirators? Co-conspirators that could have helped her escape. It's another unsubstantiated story. The forensic investigator decides to stage an experiment to put the first part of the story to the test. Could jewels stop a bullet? Diamonds are the hardest naturally occurring substance known to man, but aren't practical, or within the budget of this experiment. Scoring a respectable 8 out of 10 on the gem hardness scale, zirconias are a more realistic alternative. The replica corset is finished with rose quartz and carnelian. Bullets will smash into it at a thousand feet per second. Will they be deflected? Interior Ministry Colonel Vladimir Soloviev is the leader of the Romanov investigation. He's got special permission to handle the actual guns fired by Yurovsky and his execution squad. Tsar Nicholas II was killed with this pistol. This second pistol was also in the basement of the Impatiev house, and it may have been used to kill other members of the Tsar's family. This pistol was also used in all the events in the Impatiev house. It's a grotesque feeling to be in the presence to hold the weapons that killed this family. The original guns can't be used in the experiment, but the investigation has provided duplicates, guns from the same era, but with less iconic value. The reconstructed dual corsets are placed on a mannequin. For safety, only the shooter is allowed in the room. Could a diamond corset have shielded Anastasia from a hail of bullets? We had different powered weapons. They were fired sequentially, and what we have on the first two is clearly some fragmentation. There were, these projectiles did not pass through on these first two. There's an impact site here from the second but none of these were what we would consider penetrating gunshot wounds. This acts like a bulletproof vest. Maybe the legend is true. Perhaps the bones found in the forest aren't from people killed in the basement that night after all. A gunshot aimed at the heart, deflected by jewels sewn beneath the clothes. The accounts that bullets ricocheted, that Maria or Anastasia and Alexei perhaps survived the initial gunfire, are becoming plausible. For almost a century, these accounts have been the basis for many spurious claims to the Russian throne. Anna Anderson's claim was the most famous. 
she went to her grave claiming to be the last Grand Duchess Anastasia. She convinced many people, including the family of Peter Sarandanaki, whose ancestors were part of the Tsar's inner circle. My mother-in-law, to her dying days, to her last day, believed that Anna Anderson was Anastasia. For instance, she had a triangular injury on her foot, which was probably a bayonet stab. She also had the same stub toe problem as Anastasia. She had the same ear as Anastasia. There were a lot of similarities between the two. Despite her persuasive story, DNA testing after her death revealed her true identity. She was not a royal, but a former factory worker from Poland, 